Hey, what's going on, my beautiful people? It's the Mad Hatter logging back in, reporting live from your mama's basement. And this go around, I want to try something a little bit different. So this go around, I want to talk about uh, you know it's a little bit of entertainment stuff. Some uh, I'm a big fan of hip hop. Um, I'm a big fan of EDM. Uh, I'm a big fan of music, period. But you know my specialties are, are more along the lines of uh, hip hop and electronic dance music. Uh, things of that sort. And what I want to talk about this time is the beef right now that's going on between um, Wale. Wale is a DC rapper. Uh, he was a part of the, you know, the freshman list uh, back in like, I don't know, uh, I can't rem remember the date specifically, but uh, he was back there, you know, with the with the Kid Cuddies, with the Drakes, with the, you know, he was a part of that class. And I kind of get into later how he's kind of lived up with them. But, you know, you got Wale, and you got this guy, uh, Anthony Fantano. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel, uh, a pr pretty popular YouTube channel called The Needle Drop. And on there, he reviews a lot of music. He, I, I believe he started with um, a lot of hip-hop. So, uh, yeah, there's this beef going on, quote-unquote beef, right? Which is why, you know, hip-hop has got, gotten kind of... Which is one of the reasons why hip-hop has become very weak recently. Because there's a little silly, silly beef like this. And, you know, Wale, I've always been a fan of Wale. Um, me being from the D.C. area, you know, me being from Maryland, we never really had a lot of people that could speak for us. Uh, we never really, I mean, we had, you know, B.G., the Prince of Rap. You know, we had Chuck Brown. We have Go Go Music. Uh, I'm sure I'm missing a lot of people. But we, we have a, a really good music scene. He put us on the map with his lyricism and his, you know, his style and his mixtapes go to place to get new music. And you know, Wale made a a name for himself by kind of being that backpack type of guy. He he was the backpack rapper, you know. Uh, and if you guys don't know what that is, you know, it's it's more like conscious rap and 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 dudes who like to listen to music and you know and really like you know good beats, good good beats, uh, you know, double entendres, uh, deep deep meanings, you know, conscious rap. You know, type you know, most deaf Talib Kweli type stuff, right? So you know, Wale's had amazing mixtapes. You know, from a hundred miles and running, uh, which is the the one that really put him on the map, to uh, back to the feature with Ninth Ninth Wonder, uh, you know, Falarin. Um, I mean, the the recent one, uh, I, I think it's like Sunset uh, LAX Sunset Boulevard, something like that. He's always had really good mixtapes, but he's always struggled when those albums have come out, right? When the albums come out, he really struggles with production value. And I don't know, I think that Wale, I think coming from D.C. and that kind of area, and not having those connections, you know, he reached out to Kanye West a while back, you know? And and there was this beef he had with Kanye West and Kid Cudi. That, uh, Kid Cudi was, you know, struggling with uh, a lot of different, you know, drug addictions at the time. And he kind of went hard at, uh, at Wale. Uh, you know, he, he took, you know, Wale had this freestyle on Tim Westwood. And he, it, it was, a uh, uh, my bad, it wasn't on Tim Westwood. It was the Thank You freestyle from uh, Jay-Z's Thank You. And he uh, he made this comment about throwing around wallets like the dude that Kid Cudi hit was the line. Because Kid Cudi kind of, you know, he was a, a really high energy guy. Had his addictions and he, he, he a fan um I forgot exactly what happened, but um, uh, a fan uh, threw a wallet on the stage at Kid Cudi, I think because like somebody had lost that wallet, so the fan threw it on the stage. I could have my details wrong, but basically the fan threw the wallet on the stage, and Kid Cudi found that fan and like punched him. But then Kid Cudi felt bad and like you know later apologized. But you know Wale, you know he's reached out to you know Kanye because at, at the time that was when uh, Kid Cudi was with Good Music, and so Kid Cudi came at him and was like, "Yo, we don't fuck with niggas like you." And Kanye kind of dissed him. And Wale was hot at the time, but he wasn't getting a lot of help. So I think that's part of the reason why he struggles with some of this production value. And kind of understanding the game. You know, understanding these beats, you know, that really put you over the top. But at the same time, he should understand, like, the production value is important because he puts out great mixtapes. But again, the albums he put that, that he puts out are meh, right? Meh. Um... Attention deficit was all over the place. I enjoyed it. You know, I'm, I was a fan of it, but it was very all over the place. You know, it, it didn't have anything that was uh, concrete about it. Like it didn't have a, an identity, really, uh, to be to be clear. 
Um, the album after that he came out with was Ambition. I, I enjoyed Ambition. That was when he signed with Maybach Music Group. Um, but the, you know, I think Wale felt the pressure of trying to keep up with the Kid Cudi's and the Drakes. You know, and you know, if if you understand hip hop, they're they're more of a singing type. Like they do a lot of harmonizing, and they have kind of an R and B flow. So I think Wale felt left out because he wants to be a part of that group. But what sets Wale apart is his lyricism and just the fact that he can straight spit. He can just get on the track and straight spit. And I think he's 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 getting caught up in that. And so his albums honestly have been mediocre. I, I think the best album that he had, I, I enjoyed uh I, I did like Ambition, but I think I would go uh The Gifted and then Ambition. But this last album he came out with Shine, uh and it's been my criticism because as a fan, what drew me into Wale was again his straight lyricism, his politically being politically conscious being from D.C. and kind of being that outsider type of feel to it, right? But what he's doing now is he's uh, he's he's going after the... the And th- I don't have a problem with who he's going after. It's just the fact that he's not reaching out beyond that, in my opinion, when it comes to his albums. But he's going after the young... And maybe this is his strategy, right? And, and you know, maybe I'm not looking deep enough, and maybe this is his strategy, is to go after the backpack uh, uh, listeners with his mixtapes and then come back and go after another group with his um, with his albums. Because albums are supposed to be more mainstream. But at the same time, Juicy J put out a crazy mainstream album that killed it. When he put out Stay Trippy, that killed it. And I could go into, like, uh, Wale had a comment about that as well, about Stay Trippy and, and Juicy J, but I won't do that. But, um, so, I uh, kind of lost my train of thought, but Wale, he, he struggled with with uh, putting out these mainstream albums. And this last one, Shine, is... What what I think that he's doing is he's going after a certain segment of the population. I think he's stretching himself too thin, right? He's going after young black women who are insecure, who more than likely go to college or HBCUs, and, and they're very conscious themselves. And he's going after those, those women, right? And he's kind of leaving behind you know, the dudes that were there from the beginning when he wasn't getting any, you know, uh, uh, appreciation from the women, right? Because let's be honest, you know, my homie told me, because uh, we were talking about this, uh, Wale's not a sex symbol. It doesn't mean he's, you know, some people might not find him sexy, but come on, compared to Kid Cudi and compared to uh, uh, Drake, he's not a sex symbol. I mean, Drake, for whatever reason, I'm not saying I agree with this necessarily, but in my opinion, Drake, you know, he's light skinned, he's taller, and so is Kid Cudi. C- C- Kid Cudi's mixed, you know, and and they have, and and honestly, they 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 do look better as people, like Pauls, but they're good looking dudes, and they they can sing a lot better than Wale can, and Wale's, you know, he's just a he's just a, a you know a Negro, you know, like me, like he ain't like super sexy, but I think he's trying to be that. He just needs to play when he needs to play to. So I say all that to come to this. There's this beef between him and uh, Anthony Fontano, that YouTube guy, who uh, YouTube blogger essentially, and uh, Anthony Fontano might have went a little hard at first against Wale. And he said that you know Wale's album was not good, and and it shows because his his record sales were not good. He's only sold very few uh, copies of his album, and he does struggle with getting his album out there and getting the right promotion. But this has happened time and time again, so you think he'd learn. And, you know, a lot of the, the hip-hop review sites, like Hot New Hip Hop, uh, they didn't give it a good review, and neither did the fans, you know? And it's, it's, it's just mediocre, right? It's, it's a lot of, like, these airy sounds. Like, it sounds very... It sounds like, you know, I forgot who said it. I don't know if it, uh, if it was a, a YouTube commenter or something, but someone said it. It sounds like, you know, yoga music. And then, and then he tries to sing, and I get it. Like, I'm sure his publicist told him to try to sing, you know, try to get to the ladies and try to, you know, that, that's where the game is going. But he honestly he can't sing, man. It don't sound good. Like just spit some stuff, man. Just spit, you know. Look at look at what um what's his name Kendrick Lamar does. But at the same time, Kendrick Lamar doesn't put out mixtapes, so I get it. They they are different. Um, but Anthony Fontana went at him, you know, and he uh, he made a comment about uh the one song um I, I, it's escaping me, but it's uh it's with Major Lazer and Diplo on it, and Fantano. Uh, said, you know, this is a, a pathetic attempt at getting on the Caribbean craze. You know, you know that Diplo sound, right? Um, which is which is really hot right now. Um, 
It was like the, uh, uh, you know, Jack U kind of sound. And that's what, while they were trying to get on uh, with that with that one song on the album, but he comes back at Anthony Fantano and he's like, look, he's like, this is, you know, a Nigerian African beat type of music. He's like, it's not Caribbean. So what the fuck are you talking about? You know, Wale has every uh, every opportunity and, and every uh, right to respond to that. But I think Wale is missing the point because it might yeah, right. Like if you if you really want to get on it, it's African. But the Caribbean is African as well. So it's part of the diaspora, so it's all the same thing. But I think the point that Anthony uh, this Fontano cat was making is that he's trying to capitalize on this craze, and he's kind of going for the lowest common denominator. Uh, uh, Wale is going for the lowest common denominator. And he called it a pathetic attempt, you know. And you know, on, on internet culture, you kind of got to be a little bit overt and over the top. And you know, Wale took offense to that, which which he has every right to, and he responded. Uh, but I think Wale, you know, he's given a little bit too much credit to just a, a regular YouTuber who's who's a fan. He's not necessarily like a music specialist. But what makes you a specialist uh, in anything, right? Wale got his start by being kind of a blog rapper, and and. Anthony Fantano is a, is a blogger as well. So it's like they both got their start because of the Internet, to quote, you know, the great Chattis Gambino. So I say all that to say, you know, the beef did kind of get a little bit out of hand. Like they were digging at each other. Fantano comes back and talks about the amount of record records that Wale sold. Wale only sold like 22,000 copies at first. You know, it, it didn't do well, but. You know, and Wale came back at him and was talking about, you know, this is what happens when we let hipsters review music. And he, you know, he came back in some whatever, uh, whatever language that uh, Nigerians speak. Uh, excuse me for, you know, that is escaping my mind. But whatever language they speak, he came back and, you know, he threw some shots in Nigerian at this guy. But to be fair, you know, as a fan of Wale, I have been really disappointed in his music. Um, I feel that he's kind of ignored his core base and, and, and to add this one last point, even J. Cole in his song False Prophets, where he goes after Kanye West, he doesn't really go after these people, but he really, you know, critiques the artists that he knows and that he looked up to. And he went after J. Cole, went after Kanye West and, you know, talking about how, you know, what happened, man? You just have a whole bunch of yes men around you. And he talked about this other rapper that he knows that gets caught up in the game. You know, he's he's worried about what everyone has to say. And he's kind of ignoring his core fan base. And, and he was saying, you know, he's like, man, if you really put out, J. Cole was talking about Wale in the song. He was like, look, if you really put out, you know, a strong uh, song or a strong album, he's like, you can really change a nigga's life, man. And and he can, like, Wale's got that. But I, I feel like he's kind of become complacent, um, which, you know, it is what it is. That's what happens the longer you're in the game. And it, it's hard to be relevant in the game. So that's kind of where I'm gonna leave that. This kind of got long, uh, got very long, but yeah, it's it's unfortunate that the, that it came down to some beef like this. Oh, and another another thing is, uh, <laughs> it was kind of funny because Vince Staples is a, a rapper at a Long Beach, really good rapper by the way. But he was like he was like Anthony Fontano and uh, Wale need to squabble up, which is kind of goofy. But uh, you know, uh, Vince Staples is a character uh, you know in and of himself, so. Uh, I, I think uh, Fontano kind of had some fun with it. You know, he kind of made fun of himself and he, you know, poked, poked fun at Wale. He's moved on. I think Wale's a little still hurt. You know, he's he's much more of a sensitive, you know, type of guy, which is, you know, whatever it is. You know, that that's that's just that's why he makes great music. But, you know, it's just like, Wale, man, just get back to your get back to your core, man. That, that's all I got to say, man. Just get back to your core. Your core fans are still here. You know, you let you let us down a couple times on the last few albums you know including myself but hopefully you know you know we wish the best for you and uh i'm gonna leave it at that so i'll holla at y'all next time